That's crazy. Holy cow. 97.2 oh, I saw. 97.2. Oh man, that thing is fast. What's up guys, Jimmy Chang here with Andrew. Welcome back to Freshly Charged where we review the latest in personal electric vehicles like this, the Cabo Wolf King GTR. This is an update to Cabo's best scooter. The GTR is bigger, it's faster, it goes farther. This thing promises to be pretty amazing. They tell us it's gonna knock our socks off. So in this video, we're going to unbox it, set it up and take it for a quick test ride. Andrew, tell us what to expect. Bigger tires, removable battery, and it's supposed to be a ton of fun. It's very heavy, I will say that. It's 137 pounds and probably with this whole box set up, maybe like 150. This looks like an 84 volt five amp charger, which is weird to me because from everything spec'd out, it said it was gonna come with two chargers that are 1.75 amps. So I think we just got a fast charger. And with this being a five amp charger, the scooter is a 72 volt, 35 amp hour battery. This should take seven hours to charge the scooter from empty to full. With the two 1.75 amp chargers, it should take you 10 hours to charge from empty to full. Oh, nice. This is the first time I've ever seen a Cabo branded rapid charger. They do love to use this foam that kind of creates a snow effect and it's pretty obnoxious. You pretty much need a vacuum to clean your, your brand new scooter off. We received the demo unit from Bora Motors. They used it to take some pictures and do a little bit of ride footage. So yours is gonna be packaged just a little bit nicer than ours is. I already noticed a few things that I haven't seen on the previous scooters. You can adjust the dampening on the front suspension, which is really sweet. You've never had that before in the past and bigger tires. And these are hybrid off-road tires. So this is sweet. This is the first time I've ever seen this on the Cabo scooters that aren't the Mantis. The Wolf series has always had either an off-road tire or a street tire, and this is a hybrid off-road tire. So that is a sweet design and it's 12 inches. And the other thing I noticed is they got rid of the Achilles killer on the kickstand. Look at that. No more big wing mm. to cut your ankles. Yeah, every time you put that up, there used to be this little flange that would flare out and uh, perfect for when you're walking next to your scooter for that piece of metal to just slice into your, the back of your heel. All right, so while Andrew starts putting that together to make things more efficient, you can actually charge this battery outside of the scooter. So pretty cool feature. You can bring this in and charge it in your home, in the office. And so let's go ahead and do that. It looks like we've got two ports. The caps automatically close, they snap shut, and we have the one charger. So let's go ahead and start charging this. And another thing that I noticed, there's a latch right here so you can lock it when it's folded. Ooh. That's gonna be extremely helpful. These are some things that we've complained about in prior versions, not being able to lock into itself. Having that fin on the kickstand that slices your heel while you're walking. I'm excited to see what other changes they've made with this bad boy. Yeah, here's one actually right now that I can already see. And it's gonna be this trigger throttle. Oh, look at that. Yeah, in the previous versions, they had the thumb throttle and that thing had just a dead zone. It's the same one that's on the Nami and it's just terrible. That dead zone was a third of the throw. I'm hoping this trigger throttle fixes that issue. So this is gonna be a trigger throttle combined with a sine wave controller. So we should expect that nice smooth ride, but we'll have more of an instantaneous, more responsive throttle. This thing is massive. <laughs> I'm pretty stoked. Oh, and one thing we have is memory. This is pretty sweet. It started in speed setting two, and in the previous models, it always started in speed setting zero, and you'd have to work your way up, so I like that. Oh, and there's that S mode. So there is a new S mode. We've never seen that before. In the previous versions, it was just basically eco, one, two, three, four, five, and then we have this new S mode. And this is supposed to give you more power out of the controller. The controller is increased in size. On the previous Cobble Wolf King GT Pro, it had two 35 amp controllers, and the new one, it has one controller that has 100 amp output. In S mode, it says it's anywhere between 110 to 160. There's kind of mixed specs being released on it right now. I would assume it's probably gonna be 110 amps. So in S mode, you're gonna get a little bit more out of the controller to go faster. They said it should tap out at about 65 to 70 miles per hour. Probably for me, because I'm a heavier rider, I'll be about 65 miles per hour. And one thing I did notice already that's different is the brake lights that turn on when you go to brake. These lights used to never turn on when you would go to brake and now it turns red. When the lights are on and you go to brake, it goes from blue 
to pink. I think really what's going on there is you have blue and red lights coming on at the same time and it's turning it into a pinkish color and it's more purple because blue and red in the primary colors equals purple. Turn those off and now your brake lights are pure red. And that makes sense because there's no blue side strip lights on. Okay, we got it all set up. Let's do a walkthrough from top to bottom. Yeah, starting with the right side, we have the trigger throttle, this four button control panel. You use a mode button to go through the different types of settings. This, you can see the current that's going to the motors, the front and the rear, as well as the temperature, which is always a nice added touch because when you're riding the scooters fast and hard, especially in hot weather, you should pay attention to the temperature of your motors. The recent Cabos have had this display and it is really sharp, really crisp. And we're standing right here in the sun and even in the sunlight, you can see all that information. It's, it's brilliant. On this control here, the buttons are a little angled, which may seem a little awkward, but if you put your hand here, you can see it's perfect for your fingers because those are the two buttons that you're going to be using most often when you're riding and it's it's at a perfect angle for your thumb. We have zoom hydraulic brake levers and then on the left side you have another zoom hydraulic brake lever, a light button, turn signals. These are the same turn signals that are on the Cobble Wolf King GT Pro. And this is new. They're using the bottom LEDs as turn signals as well. And then obviously back here and they've gone with the smoky tail light. Cabo always does it right by putting a loud motorcycle horn. Coming down the center, you have this latch to hold it into place when it's folded. Two compression knobs, which is completely new. And previously you'd never had this adjustment in the front so you can adjust the dampening. And then moving down the center, you have the box for the controller. And this controller has some ventilation in the front. This is always smart to cool it down. I like that they've kept this separate from the battery because the battery and controllers were getting hot in the previous versions. So by separating it, you have more room for more battery cells and you keep both of them cooler. And this is where that 100 amp controller is at. You have the 12 inch by four inch hybrid off-road tires. This is a sweet addition. I do like they made it a hybrid off-road tire. And then they have zoom hydraulic brake calipers with 160 millimeter brake disc. And this brake disc is nice and thick. So that's one thing that they introduced on the previous version was putting a thicker brake disc for better stopping power. One other thing I forgot to mention about the tires is there's a tire sealant in there. It's a gel that lines the tire. And if you do get a Nell or a go head in there, it should self seal. So it uses the similar folding mechanism that we've seen in all the Wolf series. This one seems a little bit more rigid. I do wish they would have fixed this chain. It's pretty garbage and it'll break in a few weeks on me. Let's go ahead and show you what it looks like. Pops up and then to put it into place, there's this little locking mechanism. You see there's a barrel nut and it fits on the bottom of this. And then to get it down, I have to push down, but it takes a lot of pressure. This is the most pressure I've seen on one of these folding mechanisms. Okay, so fold that. We'll drop this in place and this gets a little awkward. You wanna move the display so it's not getting pounded into the kick plate. And this just locks in right here. So it makes it a little bit easier to lift up. Still not super easy because it's 137 pounds, but now at least locks into place when folded. Yeah, because on the previous versions, you fold it, you pick up the end. Because the handlebar wasn't affixed to anything, it would just kind of wo wobble all over and swing all over and it got really unwieldy. It's a very long scooter though, once folded. Yeah, it gets longer. It's one of the few scooters that gets longer when folded. What's your guess? How big it is? How long that is? Previous versions were about five feet, so probably like five feet, four inches. Okay, I'm going five, seven. Oh look, five foot, four inches. Okay. Now the trick is getting this thing open. So, up, bring it up into place. Doesn't look easy. No, it's not super easy. <sighs> Ooh, see that? It's got a lot more resistance than I've ever noticed on the previous scooters. And I could do it looser, but you want that tight. So really strong folding mechanism, but can be challenging for sure. Moving down, you have this lock where you can get the battery off. And to adjust the code, it's really easy. It's defaulted at 000, but if you push in this button and you change this, now it's set at 900. And when you go back to 000, it's locked in place. So there's a little button to the right of it. You just push that in place once you're at the right code and you can adjust it to where you need to go. There you go, easy peasy. So to remove the battery, it's really simple. You just set it to the code, twist it, and it pops right out. And there's not a lot of leeway here, so you kind of got to stick your fingers in there to pop off that latch. So I don't love that. I wish there was a little bit more room. I don't even have massive hands, so I feel bad for the people with big hands. It pops out, it's 72 volts, 
35 amp hours, two charge ports, and they have the updated charge ports where they fit in perfectly and they don't create that arc issue. So you have that upgraded kickstand with no Achilles killer, this rear kick plate, which is part plastic and part metal. So just pay attention to that. I put my foot on this and I've never had any issues with this breaking on me, but technically they don't really want you to put tons of weight back here. And then one sweet thing they have is adjustable hydraulic coil suspension. So you can adjust the rebound to fast or slow. Another 12 by four inch hybrid off-road tire that is also self-healing. Zoom hydraulic brake calipers, and then a 160 millimeter brake disc that's a little bit thicker than you've seen on other scooters to have higher stopping power. Overall, they made a lot of improvements on the things I had issues with with the previous models. There's still a little few quirks about it, but overall, huge improvements. So let's do some measurements real quick. Show you how big the scooter is. The deck is gonna be a little bit under nine and a half inches. The length, the longest points is about 25 inches, but the usable space is about 23 inches. The height from the ground, that's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be pretty massive. It's about 10 and a half inches, just under 10 and a half inches. And then the other measurement we wanna look at is these handlebar width. This is gonna be 29 and a half inches. And from the deck height to the handlebars, this is about 38 inches from the deck height to the handlebar height. One of the most powerful scooters you'll ever ride. And it's super cool because you have the dual forks and that's what Cabo Wolf King series is known for. And let's get our safety gear on so we can take this for a quick little spin so we can give you guys our impression about the ride. Okay, got the safety gear on. It's a beautiful evening. We're out here riding this beautiful brand new scooter. It is a doozy. They said it'd knock our socks off and it is knocking our socks off. It is a ton of fun. Oh man, that thing is fast. We're gonna do a really quick speed test, uh, no load speed test right here. So let's lift it up and we'll put it on this bench. It's gonna be a two person job because this is not light. Turn this to speed mode S, which might be sport or might be sexy. We'll go ahead and get this thing going. It's got a different acceleration curve than the Cabo Wolf King GT Pro. I'd say not as aggressive at first, but then it just starts rolling and I think it has something to do with the bigger tires. All right, so that's a little no load speed run really quick before it gets dark. We're just gonna keep riding around, give you guys our first impressions of the Cabo Wolf King GTR. How's it feel? It's fast. So you're not doing those 30 to 50 foot burnouts, and it seems like these tires are getting better traction than the previous. These hybrid off-road tires create a different type of spin effect when you go to pull the throttle. I'll show you what I mean. Those other scooters came with off-road tires and off-road tires are great for traction off-road, but on-road you want more surface area contact. And so these hybrid tires are doing a great job. All right, we're gonna do an impromptu speed test here. And uh, this is a nice little open stretch of road. See how fast hands we can get going. <laughs> All right, you're cruising, Andrew. How fast did you get that thing going? It's at 65 on the display, so we'll see with the draggy next time. Yeah, on our full review, we'll do uh, an official speed test with satellite GPS, but you said 55 you got? 65. Six yeah. 65. <laughs> yeah, and it felt really stable. So that's one thing I've always loved about the cobble scooters. I was worried about the bigger tires affecting the stability, but this was great. <laughs> that's crazy, the clearance on there. Yeah, so he, Andrew just went down some rolling hills. This has probably the highest clearance of any scooter we've tested. Maybe the RS comes close. Yeah, some of them get sketched coming down grass because there's those divots in there, but this felt great. Plenty of clearance, and especially on those rollers, I had no issues at all clearing them. Let's go over our first impressions. What do you think? I'm excited to test this out some more. It's fast. It's got great clearance. It's made major improvements on things that I disliked on the previous version. So as we test it more and more, I'll tell you more about what I love and hate about the scooter. We're gonna have a full review video coming out soon, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, and when you guys ride, wear your safety gear.